Hello all and welcome to the first Archie's Forge YouTube video. So we had a few requests uh, from people on our other social media for a bit more dynamic content, showing stuff in a bit more detail. And I'm, uh, I'm too old to understand how TikTok works and no one wants to see me on OnlyFans. So I thought we'd give YouTube a go. And today we're going to be looking at the Ballista Dread. So we've had some upgrade kits ready for this model for uh, a while now, but I've been holding off releasing them uh, in the hope that Games Workshop, when they release the kit separately to the Leviathan box, would have been going for a multi-part kit, so we'd have a bit more flexibility and conversion. But from the uh, leaks of the new releases, it looks like that's unlikely. So we're going to go ahead and release our new upgrade kits, um, which are all available on our website now. We'll have a link in the description below for those as well. Um, and it's it's not too tricky a conversion, but I thought I'd do a video just showing how we do it because it does require a bit of extra cutting and stuff beyond just our normal sort of, you know, replace the direct panels. So the only bit that we need to actually edit is just the front one. So it's the front panel here, and I've already got a ballista shred already built, all the rest of it done. The only thing I've done different to this than stock is I've just cut on, you can see on the right hand leg, the foot away from the bit of scenic base that it comes with because I wanted to use one of these resin base toppers as well because that matches the rest of my army. And today we're going to be converting this guy to be a Black Templar model um, just simply because that's what I collect. So it's the most useful one, but we have upgrade kits available for a, a wide variety of chapters. So <clears throat> the only bit that we need to edit on here is the front breastplate. So you just need to make a couple of cuts and everything I'm going to be doing today is only with a pair of clippers and a knife. If you have a Dremel, you have a razor saw, you'll be able to do this a lot quicker. Um, probably not much better really, it's just really a speed improvement. Um, but I wanted to show it really just as what you can do with the basic tools and nothing fancy. So what you need to do is you need to remove these two side plates here and we're gonna remove the front as well. So the side plates are nice and easy. You flip it over onto the back and you can see here. And the best way to do it is really, is just start cutting. And because you're using clippers, you wanna do it in small bits. Cause when you do the clippers, as you can see, you get the stress lines there. And if you try and cut too much at one time, you'll end up breaking bits. You'll end up just ruining the model. So you just keep cutting away little bit by little bit. And we're gonna cut the, oh, that one's gone. Uh, we're going to cut the entire side off. So what I like to do is I like to cut on the back first just because it's easier. And then I trim in from the side there. I'm going to clip there. And I just you keep turning it over wherever's the easiest way to get a little bit of extra leverage. We just keep going. Again. And after a while, it's easier just to start breaking bits. There we go. <clears throat> So, you take all of that off, and we want to take it right back to smooth on here. So, flip it over to the side, and just start clipping. So that's one side pretty much done. We'll use a hobby knife just to, uh, to tidy that up a bit, and we'll do the other side now as well. So again, as you can see, that's taken, what, a minute to do that side, if that. It's not a particularly long process, and you don't have to worry too much about being overly precise when you're doing this, because we do all the cleaning up after. So it's really, it's just hack it all off, and, uh, and we'll tidy it up with the hobby knife once we're done. There we go. So again, just flip it back and forth wherever it's most comfortable for you to, to snip it. There we go. And what I like to do when you get these bits is you just bend it really, you just grab it onto it with the clippers and it's a little bit easier to get some of the more tricky bits. You just force it along the stress line. Okay. 
So once you've done that, you've got this essentially, and we'll give this a little tidy up. And what I'm going to do is there's there's a couple of ways you can use the upgrade kits that we sell uh, for the ballista. So it's sort of um, a, a low to high effort essentially. There's sort of three ways that you can do it, um, and you can sort of put as much work in as you want um, to get the results that you want. So what we'll do, we'll just tidy this up a bit. I'm only doing it roughly for this. No one wants to sit here and watch me uh, scraping away for, for 20 minutes to get a perfectly smooth edge. There we go. Plus it's a brand new knife on here, so uh, don't want to end up putting it through my hand. There we go. So, here all the rubbish away. So, what I was saying about in terms of the, the level of effort you can put in. So we're gonna pop that on now. And it fits nice and easily. And then our ballistas kit for the Black Templars consists of two side panels, one sarcophagus flap. We have a replacement for the sarcophagus cover as well. A little tabard and two exhaust bits as well. So if you wanted to just do absolutely the minimum level of effort that you need, you would just cut off the side panels and then we pop these on and we'll glue these once we're done, but I'm not gonna do it yet because I'll do the uh, the more intense one so you can see it. So we're gonna replace the side panels, pop in the exhaust bits on the back, and then to put the tabard on, if you see here, we need to remove these two little bolts, otherwise it doesn't sit flush. And then that will just clip on down here with a little bit of super glue, and I'll do that in a minute. So that is your, if you wanna do the easiest possible way of converting it, it's just the two side panels, and that gives you a really good result, and you can do that in you know almost no time at all. If you want to do a bit more, then what we do is we'll take these off, we'll take it back, <clears throat> and we want to remove this whole sarcophagus flap. And this does require a bit more cutting. So the easiest way to do it is to start off with this line here. You want to take it level with the flap and just snip there. and there, and then again on this side. There we go. That gives you your top bit, which is all fine, and we'll put that to one side, we'll come back to that later. And then we've taken this off. Again, we wanna do this in little parts, otherwise, if you do it all in one go, you'll just absolutely make a hash of it, and particularly with how thick the plastic is in some of these areas, it can get quite difficult to cut through. So we'll start off We'll take the top bits off and start just cutting away a bit down at a time. Till we've got the majority of it off. As you can see it is really thick in these areas and if you do have something like a Dremel um, you will be able to do this in about five seconds <laughs> um, it is quite a lot easier with that but I do want to show as far much as possible sort of the use of standard tools on this channel um, not everyone has those bits of equipment they are great I do have them all I love a I love a hobby gadget I'm always buying something so I'll do a video in a few days showing some of those we've got the uh, the wow stick and some new little mini reciprocating sanders and grinders that have uh, just sort of been released in the the uk from a company called dispray uh, and they are they're really great bits of kit but we don't need them for this so what we want to do is if we see here the line here we want to essentially cut off anything that resembles the old bit so we want to remove here and we want to get this bit flush and on this side as well. So, this is where we are just cutting away tiny, tiny little bits at a time, and then we do the, the fine detail work with the knife. So we'll take that bit there, we go to here, go to there, 
And this does get covered up a little bit by the uh, the sarcophagus flap when we put it on, so you don't have to get it completely neat. Um, I will show you after. The bottom will look like a mess, and then you put the sarcophagus flap on it, and it covers absolutely everything. So it's, uh, it's nice and easy. In that regard, so I'll just snip around here. Again, little bits. If we try to do too much at a time, it just bends it. It gives it that horrible marks. There we go. That was probably probably a bit too much on that one, but we'll make it work. There we go. So we've cut it all the way down to there. And all we've got left now is this little bit. And as you can see, we've roughly got the curve there. We'll tidy that up um, with the hobby knife in a minute. That side's a bit neater as well. We want to remove this bit on here. And the easiest way to do this is with a sharp knife. And it is just take it away in little bits. Don't try and use the clippers for this. It's, it's too tricky when it's on the top. Again, if you've got a little Dremel or little sanding sticks, these don't make hard work of that at all. But it's not difficult with a sharp knife, just be careful, because I think as we all know, the second you put a new blade on one of these, you will put it into your hand within the first hour of using it. There we go, and we've got most of that off. You can see there, it's pretty much all there. And once I've done the main work with the knife, I'll flip it over to the back and just use the back of it just to scrape. And what we'll do, we'll do a couple of little test fits, see how it goes, and maybe take a bit more off. There we go, so that's done there. We just wanna tidy up on the side here, so this little bit sticking out, come off. Give it again. Little scrape on the back, and on this side, see here, we just need this little bit off as well, otherwise, it won't see a nice and flush. So, what we do now, we give it a little test fit, just pops on the bottom there, and we'll just have a quick little look and see how it goes. So, with the top, because of the way that these little bits on the sarcophagus sit. We just need to cut off just these little sharp corners here. Only a tiny bit. It's just otherwise it doesn't sit nice and flush. So we'll pop that on there. And as you can see, it's pretty much there. We've covered up all this bottom bit here, where it's not looking particularly great. It's mostly covered up by the flap. We just do a tiny little bit of tidying up work um, with the back of the knife just to clean it up. You might maybe want to, on this side, we've taken off a tiny bit too much, a little bit of green stuff, a little bit of sprue goo, something like that. Um, but by and large, that is it, and it's it's not a particularly long conversion. We do include in the kit as well, if you want to do, go the whole way, <laughs> a replacement cover for the sarcophagus. Unfortunately, on the ballistas model, this is moulded on, and... I'm not going to lie, it's not a fun job to remove. I did it, here's one I prepared earlier, on this Iron Hands Dread. And although we put it in there because I know some people will want to do it, try and angle it so you can see. You can barely see. It's a, lo it's a, it's a lovely little cover. It's got the, uh, the skull and the cog symbol on it, and you can't see any of it. And that was probably about 25 minutes work with a hobby knife, scraping it all flat um, for nothing. Um, but we do include it in there if you do want to do it or you know then it's just a bit in your bits box um, for future use So what we'll do now is we will assemble it. So I've got here This is one that I prepared earlier just a little bit more tidied up You can see on there. It's just a bit more flatter and stuff like that It's just the sort of the extra five minutes with a hobby knife that you would need and again here's the difference Just on here so you can see it's just a little bit rougher it's just, you know, you don't want to sit here and watch me for five minutes just with a back of a hobby knife tidying everything up. Um, and I'll show you. So it is really nice and easy to do. I we'll use um, the main glue I use is the Tamiya Extra Thin, um, just because it is so nice. Um, and it's always great as well because you can uh, use a spare pot and make yourself some sprue goo. 
which there are tons of videos on YouTube all showing you how to do that. So we'll pop, there we go, the bottom on. Grab the top. Pop that on as well. Then we'll take our two side panels and we'll do those jacks. And the main glue I use is this Gorilla Glue. It's the brush and nozzle stuff. Um, it's personal preference, really. Um, I know everyone has the sort of particular brand super glue they like. Um, I'm a fan of this stuff. I just think it's nice and easy to use, particularly where it's got the uh, the brush and the nozzle as well. Just then you can get that little bit extra. So we'll start on the right hand side of the dread. And what we need to do is we need a little bit of glue on just these panels here. And that's the main bits where it all adhere to the model. So I'll turn it over and pop that on and we want to line that up just with the edge there. You can see that lines up nice and easy there. And we'll grab the other one. And the good thing about the Gorilla Glue as well is it is nice and quick setting. Um, does it nice and easy. And we'll pop that one on as well. And again, we just line that up with the edge there. Then we'll grab our front plate. And here we just want a bit of bump. Oh, too much there. Let's scrape some off. We want a little bit there. And then we want just on the sides here as well. That's the main sort of contact points for this bit once you've, uh, you've chopped it off. And there we go. So that is all of those bits on there now. I'll just pop the other brazier in there. And we've got a little loincloth as well that comes in the Black Templar kit. And the Dark Angels kit will come with a similar like one for them and the ultramarines one will be coming with a little extra um Tarugis, the uh the roman style um leather flaps and there we go so that's taken what about 15 minutes of work um obviously it'd be a lot quicker without me talking going through all the different steps and we've got a nice customized dreadnought there for the uh black templars and I'll, um, I'll throw a video up in a few days once he's all painted um, with how I do my Black Templar painting as well, which is nice and easy. So a nice quick scheme. Um, and there you go. And if you wanted to do some other bits, just to add a little bit extra on to him, I'll probably will as well. We've, on our website, we sell little extra tilting shields that I'll probably decorate just on the side because you've got these nice big flat panels on the side of the Protellis. And I'll also pop some candles because you can never have too many candles with a, uh, a Black Templar model. Um, I hope this has been useful for everyone in sort of learning how to sort of do it. It's a fairly simple conversion, but it is a, a little bit tricky in some parts. Um, and I hope that's been useful for you guys. Cheers.